It's basically just the essence of Bin 10. It's just starting fresh. Uh, it doesn't ignore things that came before. It doesn't contradict, but it isn't slavishly tied to those things either. Uh, it's just a fresh take of the things we loved when we first did Bin 10 again. So many things. First up is the format. It's 11 instead of 22, uh, which is very different for us from a storytelling perspective. It just distills everything. I don't think it's at all like other 11 minute format shows. It's not a crazy comedy. It's still Bin 10. It just happens more efficiently and more quickly. Uh, so it's like getting some power boost shot of Bin 10 uh, as opposed to a languorous, luxurious vacation style Bin 10 that we're accustomed to. Uh, so that's top. Second is that John Fang and his team of board artists have created a completely different visual palette for the show. Uh, it looks fresh, it is fresh, it's very of the moment. Uh, it's even a little shocking in how fresh it is at times. I was like, wow, is that our show? And it is, it has this very vibrant color uh, palette. It moves very quickly. It just, it just has a very different look and feel, but I think a welcome one uh, and one that the more I see of it, the more I'm like, I love this. I'm one of the Man of Action guys and all four of us were there on day one and it was basically to just say what were the things that made us want to pitch this show? Why did we want to sell the show in the first place? And so a kid on endless summer vacation with his cousin uh, is back in full swing, you know, that just we're always going somewhere else, we're traveling the country, we're seeing the sights, but along the way there are these uber big bad guys. Uh, almost everywhere you go, which makes you wonder what kind of vacation this is for Ben and Gwen and Max. Uh, that core dynamic of that family unit, just Gwen, Ben and Max, I love that it's, it's the feel of a brother and sister but they're cousins, so we don't quite have all the baggage of that family. And Max is a good surrogate father figure but he's not their father, and so it lets them have a great time in a family kind of unit without being a family driven show. Uh, and I think that that's, that's pretty fun. Uh, certainly 10 aliens. I remember the day that the 11th alien showed up. Uh, my dad called, he's 68 at the time, I think. And he's like, there can't be 11, it's been 10. Uh, and so it's 10, in, uh, in honor of my dad and dads everywhere who only want there to be 10 aliens. Uh, ben turns into 10 again. We have pared back the mythology quite a bit, uh, which is again, not to say it doesn't exist, but we're just on an adventure with a kid who turns into 10 aliens and has a great time with his cousin and his uncle, uncle his grandpa, on the road fighting bad guys. And we're kind of leaving it there uh, for the moment and just enjoying that and figuring out what that means, you know, spending our time with Ben and, and figuring out how he can be a hero. My wife says about me that I'm either six years old or 60 and that I don't really live anywhere in between. And I think that for all the Man of Action guys, it's our ability to just think like kids. And in the story rooms when we're writing these episodes, at some point somebody will say, what does a kid care about that? And then we just put on our kid hats and try to think, you know, what was it like to be seven, eight, nine, ten years old? What do we care about? You know, the, the themes are important to us, but also why it matters to a kid. And I think that that's a big piece of it. Certainly identification. I think as a kid I was a scrawny kid and I'm a scrawny adult uh, and I wished I could be more. You know, I was like, if I were just a little tougher, a little taller, a little stronger. And Ben can be all of those things. He can turn into 10 versions of himself that are faster, that are stronger, that have more arms, which I never thought of, uh, but it's a thing. And I think kids always wonder that. But Gwen keeps underlining the idea that you can also just do it as yourself. Uh, and I think that that's a really good counterpoint for what, what Bing goes through. And that identification is really strong. I think that the way Cartoon Network has evolved the show over time, visually, storytelling wise, kept people on board for the decade that we've been doing Ben 10. You know, it constantly evolves, it changes, but that's part of what we, we do. I mean, every couple of years, it's a different show that still has the stuff you loved before. And we're just doing that bigger this time. Ten or twelve years ago when we were making it up the first time, I think the expectation and the reality was that kids would watch it on TV and then maybe they'd go buy a toy and you know that was kind of it. But we're in an extremely different media landscape now and I think that the way you find content is different and where you find content and how much content you find. And everyone at Cartoon Network has just been really brilliant about saying from the get-go we're making a great cartoon but we also have an online presence. We also have ways for kids to get involved directly through the, you know, the games have been extremely huge for Ben 10, the online games. 
And we're doing just all of that from the, the start. We've said, we're designing this world to do all of that. So we're not doing all of the mythology of the Ben 10 universe in the show. Some of that is being doled out on other platforms, and that's gonna help kids find it, find out things. Did you know you could find this? You know, and we'll direct them to other places and other platforms to get the full Ben 10 experience. But it's built into the DNA this time, which is great.